بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I will be briefly talking about my own experience as far as this particular discussion is concerned. I remember seeing Imam Khomeini appearing upon the big screen in the late 70s and through him I felt I could find something far deeper than what I have understood of my own self, of God, of life. That led me into religious studies. However, when I went to Qom to study after finishing the initial stages of seminary studies in London, I found that that yearning deepened and I wasn't finding any answers. There was nothing there that was satiating me, that was giving that sense of, yes, I feel what I am all about or what life is all about. I was yearning for that very deep-seated meaning. I was looking for God in that way. I used to study excessive hours in the day. And then there came a time when I became totally hopeless. So I decided to go and visit the traditional Sufis that lived in Qom. Now these were not the ulama or afar. These were the very Malangi type of Sufis. And I met with a very noble old man who was the head of his own tariqa order. And he became very fond of me. And we would talk at length. He would even come to my house to visit me. On an occasion, I was at his residence and we were sitting alone. And as was my habit, I would ask questions and I would debate with him. And I could tell the fatigue on his face. And he was getting tired of my discussions. Then I noticed, and this was the first time I noticed this, that he went into a trance. And then after a little while he said, You may be an Arif, but you need to become an Ashib. And that forced a thought within me that yes, he does make sense. I have studied God through books, through mediums. I have encountered God through jurisprudence and he has not fulfilled me. Took on theology, philosophy, theoretical irfan, but nothing seems to be yielding inner contentment or fulfillment. And maybe the way to go about finding God is to actually stop searching for Him through books or through the mind. It was at that point that I realized that we really do need to become mindful of our unfulfilled state from within. And we do need to become mindful that the way in which we are going about it may also not be satisfactory. I've been to the Kaaba numerous times and I've still felt that deep sense of emptiness within me. I used to hear stories of people going to the Kaaba and they feel this sense of elation. But in my heart, I did not feel anything. And I unashamedly admit this. But I remember when I would visit the shrine of the Prophet, Imam Ali, Imam Hussein, I used to feel that sense of deep satisfaction. And then I realized that I'm looking for God in a very wrong way. With the Prophet Muhammad, I don't even know him. I just love him. With Ali Salamullah I haven't studied him at that point, I hadn't. With Imam Hussein, all I know are few hours of his lifetime. But yet I feel this deep sense of connection. The road to God, therefore, has to be 
another route. It has to be something far more substantive than deductions of the mind. I realized at that point that God does not reside in the Kaaba. Neither is he to be found within the mosque, nor in the Salah, nor in the Tasmi. In fact, I began to understand that the God who I am looking for and the way I am looking for is not to be found on earth nor upon his throne or in the hereafter. The way to find him is to truly give ourselves over to him. He has to be found at the depth of our beings. In fact, the search of or search for God is a search for the self itself. These thoughts were reinforced later on by reading of the Ahadith and the reports from the Prophet, in which the Prophet said that Allah says that I am so majestic, so grand, that the heavens in their entirety cannot encompass me. Yet, the heart of my seeker, my lover and my faithful, can find me. Imam Sadiq said that the heart of a faithful is the real throne of God. It is from here that we begin to understand that the journey of finding God is the journey of finding our own selves. That we are hidden from ourselves and hence we are hidden from God. As we discover ourselves, the true self, we begin to discover the true light that awaits our reception and that awaits emergence through us. The prayers, the fasting, these are means for us to awaken to that deeper calling that is within us. Of course, if we go through life as obedient creatures of God, with the intention of pleasing Him, then that God will not abandon us. He will indeed give us paradise. As Jesus, when He passed by a group of people, He saw them very slender and He asked them, What has brought you to this state? And they said, O Spirit of God, it's the fear of the wrath of God. Jesus looked at them and he said, God will indeed spare you. He passed by another group of people, thinner than the first. He witnessed upon them radiance. And he said, What has brought you to this state? And they said, O Spirit of God, it is the want of the paradise of God. Jesus said, Indeed, God will not deny you it. He will give you your paradise. Then he came to a group of people that he fell in love with by just looking at them. And he asked them, What has brought you to this state that you radiate with such beauty? They said, O Spirit of God, it is the love of God. He said, By God, you are the forerunners, a sabiqun. I would like us to think if we are still in search of something far deeper beyond 
the whole notion that we are here to serve God and in return He will give us paradise. Is that truly satiating us? Or is there still that calling deep within that there is more, there must be more? And if that deep calling is the calling within us to find ourselves and to find our true destiny. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.